Hello, 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 and welcome back. This is part B in the series of divorce. I have been more or less giving my testimony of what has occurred to me, had happened to me, if I can say that right. And I guess I had to stop abruptly a part A, and I'm gonna share some things with you that are really are opening up folders in my in my memory is like oh I forgot about that oh I forgot about that and when you forget about something it's part of healing and I also um, am noticing me doing this has been part of my therapy too recognizing how far I have came I mean I'm it's leaps and bounds and one thing when I was doing some editing on the the vlog three and going into vlog four, um, I want to stress to every one of you is when you hear someone tell you, just get over it, it's done, you don't have to relive it, you don't have to, you know, um, if you get into a breakup or, or you lose somebody, just get over it. You know what, to me, when you just just forget about it you are not accepting what had happened and today that is not a positive meaning you have to heal you have to go through the 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 grieving process and i am going to have a vlog after this series of divorce about um different sign or different um, types of abuse and the grieving and what I had encountered myself and put in relation of these vlogs that I'm doing for you so it would all make sense the puzzles putting together. Um, the, another reason why I'm doing this vlog is sometimes we're afraid to talk, we're afraid to come out, we're afraid to we're not wanting the attention or they'll just say get over it don't ever tell anybody to get over it the positive thing is to say or the thing that the person really might need to hear is it's okay to go through the steps that you're going through but please take care of yourself mentally spiritually physically Make sure you have someone safe that you're able to talk to. When someone's telling you just get over it, they're shutting you down. They've already put that wall up. They're not wanting to hear any more. There could be some post-trauma that's happening that's triggering these situations that you're wanting to talk about. Um, I will get more into that in the different blogs in the near future. For part B on this, the divorce series um, I had ended on vlog six where I had met this angel this woman who I had judged who I had was fearing that was going to harm me in actuality she made a miracle happen and it was remarkable and I can go to my I can go to bed every day knowing that God's watching over me. And I want you to know He's always watching over you. I, everyone has a different faith. Everyone has a different belief. Everyone, um, and that is okay. That is your right. But don't cause harm unto anybody else. But what I'm stating is, is that you, we have to have faith. And I know during this time on Vlog 6 A and B is that I had met some remarkable people during this process of me running away from what just happened, the attack, the rapes of the unwanted um, abuse that was happening to me. And I ran. I ran away. And I, I, part of me is thinking, did I do the right thing? Did I run away from my family, my responsibilities? And did, you know, those are things that were going through my mind, and I'm going to be honest, there are decisions or choices that I made, choices that I made affected my children, affected 
a lot of situations and we have to be careful meaning yes you need to fill your cup yes you need to make sure you are okay but also remember what's around you it's very difficult but but when we have outsized influence as in drugs or or alcohol that sometimes that veil is up and we don't see those things those will, but anyway continuing I had just made it at Westroads on my transfer. It was my first transfer I ever had done in my life, all by myself. And to me, that might be an everyday thing for everyone else in the world out there, but that was one of my biggest fears of failure. I didn't want to get on the wrong bus. I didn't want to miss this interview. This is my opportunity to start getting independence. And I thought, he's working with me. He has me today. Not today, devil. Today is my day. You know, I had a friend, Pam, that sent me $20. You know, everything was just going into sync. I was just, I was feeling it. I was feeling it. And um, so I was at Westroads, and I was up early because I was, I left my home, that my sister's house about 8.30, 9 o'clock that morning. My interview was until 1. And um, it was more or less almost, I, I can't even tell you where the children's hospital is. Anybody in, in Omaha that is watching this vlog will say, oh yeah, she was, you know, she, yeah, it, I don't know where it's at. <laughs> I apologize, that's very disrespectful, very, but anyway, um, I was at Westroads, I got in, they had like a transfer area there for the buses, for the, the, the transit system, and um, I got on the bus, when I was ready to leave with my head high, my shoulders high, and I felt good. I felt I'm going to win this battle. This is my battle to win. God is with me and I have my shield. I got it. So then, we make it to the location. I had rung a little earlier, saw the hospital, so I ring the bell or the little, you pull the line or I don't remember if there's a button or pulling. I, I There's some things I don't remember. I think it was something you pulled on. And so I got off the bus and it was sort of uphill. And of course you're wearing, you know, not the most comfortable shoes because you're wanting, I wasn't thinking, um, you want to look professional. So I made it inside this hospital. And I remind you, it was a children's hospital and it was so beautiful. I was hot, I was sweaty, I was needing some water. Um, I needed to refresh because it was, my makeup was falling. I had brought some makeup with me, thank goodness. And, um, and I was hungry. I, had my I could tell my sugar levels were low. I don't, I'm not diabetic, but you just know when you're a little, I was a little shaky. So then I went into the bathroom, I cleaned up, and then I was trying to find the cafeteria. Every hospital has to have a cafeteria. Amen. So I, um... Remind you, I only had $20 on me. And I had to make that last. So I can get this job and I can get paid and I can have money in my pocket and get established. I don't, I don't think Pam really comprehends that simple gift that she had given me was one of the huge stepping stones in my recovery. And we have to recognize our little angel. She is an angel of the ones that really impounded us, infect, affected us in a way that our life was changing for the better situation. Um, so I go to the to the cafeteria and I'm trying to budget, you know, and I, I thought, what would be the most healthiest thing? Make sure I get a bottle of water. And I needed some sugar and I thought, okay, I'll get some cranberry juice and um, cottage cheese and a salad. I was trying, you know, recovering from that situation I was having with the, I mean, I was being, 
I was just sick. I don't know what got me. I, it's stress. I was being physically attacked. I was spiritually attacked. I was just under so much. And, um, I sat there in the cafeteria eating and I was taking my time because I was at least a couple of hours early and I'm okay with, I was okay with that. And um, I was looking around the room and seeing the families and seeing them support each other and seeing the tears and, and it was just, I was missing my babies. And I go, this is, this, all of what I'm going through is for my babies. And I don't, they never, they didn't know that. Everything I had in dear in my, in this time, in this, in these two years, were fighting for my babies. And I hope someday they know that. It wasn't a selfish act. It was for me, for their mom, for me to be strong. And um, so I got done eating and I wanted to walk around and um, they had a gift shop. And so walking in this gift shop, you know, I, I had no, I have, I can't spend money at all. And um, looking around and, and listening to these two wonderful ladies, these older women, um, the, you know, the volunteers working in, in, the, in the gift shop and they're talking and I hear this voice of one of the voices of the lady saying, yeah, Charles did this and Charles did that. And, you know, and as soon as she said the word Charles, I felt my father. It was remarkable. And my father's name is Charles. And they were giggling and laughing and I thought, oh, it's another sign, daddy's with me. He's, he's watching over his baby girl. So I'm walking around the shop and they had, and I still have it today. And it was a ring with a, it was not a real turquoise. It was just a, a man-made stone, and, but it was made of turquoise and my Turquoise always reminded me of my father and is a stone that always grounded me. And whenever I did investigations or whenever I did um, um, cold cases, I always wore my turquoise, always. And I, I can't, I can't buy that. I can't. It was in clearance. It was only 25 cents, but I can't. I have to budget. I have to make the right decision. And so I got a little emotional because thinking of my father and knowing he's with me. And so I walked down and I sat down. I, it was so peaceful in that, in that lobby and looking outside the big, huge windows and hearing the kids, you know, in, in the background. It was, it was surreal. It was just like a breath of fresh air. You know, there's a, an ugly world out there and I was safe where I was at. And I, um, something, I just felt something. I felt something next to me and said, you need to have something to remember this moment. And I'm thinking, I do, I will remember. And I look over and I see the two elder women and I thought, So I got up and I walked over and I went and got the ring. And they're still talking about Charlie. And I had said to one of the ladies, I go, I have to blame you for this one. And they go, well, why? Why? And I go, well, you, I don't know who this Charlie is, but my father's name was Charles. And they always called him Chuck or Charles or Charlie. You know, he, he had a lot of little nicknames. And I am... Um, it reminded me and it helped me and I want to say thank you ladies and they go oh angel you'll be fine I froze and the reason why I froze because my father called everyone he knew or he ran around angel 
And that's why I call everybody angels, because of my father. I'm not able to carry his name, so I carry that tradition of calling people angel. And that's why I do that. So I just like, you get that, I, I got a little spooked. And I don't get spooked easily, believe me, <laughs> I don't. And I got spooked. And um, so I put it on and I thought, I'm going to get it. This is a sign. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this. And um, I did the interview and they they called me back for a second interview and um, I never got the job. Wow. What did I do wrong? Did I get too confident? What is what? What are you telling me? What? Am I doing wrong? Am I not going to ever get out of this mess? Am I not going to ever succeed? And the self-doubt came on and the, oh my gosh, I was just, it was horrific. The, the disappointment. My, so, my sister did a really, really wonderful thing for me. And I will be very appreciative of it. And I didn't handle the situation well at all. Um, and I do feel horrible how I did handle it. She had gotten me a bike to go get around. And because um, she knew I had a bike there in Wichita. And um, I always had said to her, I'll pay you back. I'll pay you back. And um, I had somehow, I, I, I don't know what it was, but Walgreens was applying or was hiring and I had did it online and I did so many applications, so many, so many. And I went in for an interview and in, up on the corner of 72nd and Thor, I don't, I don't remember. Pre Thorson, I don't remember this, the, the street, I, and I feel horrible saying that. I don't remember. Oh. But anyway, um, I went for that interview, and um, the gentleman that interviewed me was just, he was from Iowa, and so he was a, a Buckeye, and we were teasing each other back and forth. Hawkeye. I apologize, Hawkeye. Iowa Hawkeyes. I am so sorry because um, I'm a corn husker. And we went back and forth. And he goes, You know what? I'm going to give you a chance. <sighs> we can only give you this much an hour. But, you know, and I was, you know, he goes, You're overqualified. But I was honest with him. I and mean, he knew some of the situations, me trying to start over. And, um, I apologize start over and um, so I was just going to be there and run the register and remind you he sat there and he stated I need you to know something you are working in a very high crime area so I want you to know you'll be working late at night you need to be careful I go okay I can do that not a problem I will believe me <laughs> I've been through worse you have no clue. I've been through worse. So then from there, you know, I'm, I'm feeling better and confident. And I'm starting to ride the bike more. I'm starting to take care of myself. I'm starting to to heal while being there. And um, the very first day at this job, um, I walked. And... It was like walking up a mountain. I mean, it's it's pretty hot. I mean, elevation-wise, it was like, you know, I didn't want to be hot and sweaty. But on my first day, you know, I didn't have, um, I didn't want to ride my bike, not knowing if they had bike places to, you know, park their bike and stuff like that. So I got up there, and um, they hadn't opened the store yet. And there was a lady sitting on the bench, and I sat down, and she goes, Are you okay? And I go, Yeah, I'm just out of breath. You know, it's just, it just seems so high. And she goes, Honey, 
you are at the highest point of Omaha. You've just reached the top of your mountain. I go, what? She goes, it's all downhill from here. Just keep your smile on, you can do it. I go, do you work here? And she goes, yeah. You'll be okay. And you have to understand, these people have no idea what they're saying to you that are ringing bells in your head. I've reached the peak of my mountain that I've been climbing all this time. And this is about September. So I was August, about a month looking for a job and just getting spiritually attacked, physically attacked, being ill, um, mentally depressed. Um, I was very, very depressed. I withdrawal from my sister. Um, I was not mentally okay at all. I was bad. That job saved me. And believe it or not, Pam, if you watch this vlog, I think I had four dollars left until I got my first check from Walgreens. And I felt proud. I felt like a load was just lifted off and I'm slowly, it's a little steep, this mountain's steep because I've been climbing for a long time. For two years I've been climbing this mountain and I'm thinking I need, I can't run down this mountain. I have to take my time because I don't want to stumble. I want to have, I met, I met check, but I'm not a checkmate yet. This game is still going. And that is when I sat there on that bench on that first day and I sat there and looked straight ahead and looked out at Omaha, I'm thinking, I need to go get my kids, meaning I need to go back to my kids. This is my key to go back. And there's going to be decisions that I made. And you're going to know why I made those decisions here in the future vlogs. Why did she do that? That was stupid. You will understand why. It will all make sense. I'm going to be answering a lot of things. A lot of people out there are going to say, she was weak. No, you have no clue what I did and why I did it. And you're going to know now. And that's something that I want you to know when you're going through a time in your life. Other people will not understand until it's all over with. And during that time when they don't understand, these people that you think are your friends are going to snicker. They're not really your friends. Or they're going to turn your back on you until you're landed on your feet. Or it's you realize where your rocks are at. You realize there are people in your life for a reason. You hear the word twin flame or, or soulmate, you will have different soulmates in your life. A twin flame is the one. Soulmates will be females or males. Those are going to be people that will make an influence in your life that when you go through an experience, believe it or not, everybody has tons and tons of soulmates. Is there's a connection that is unbelievable that no one understands that barrier. But there's also people coming into your lives for positive and negative. There are people who came into my life during this time of this season of my life, of my journey, that God was carrying me. Jesus was carrying me. I was not able to walk. When I was thrown on that bed and fighting for, I was praying. So you have to, you have different seasons, you have different soulmates. There's one twin flame. So on that note, um, that day sitting on that bench and looking over Omaha, I saw my son and my daughter and my grandson, and I said, I have to go back. I have 
to fight. I have to save money. I have to be quiet about it. I cannot advertise it. And how am I going to do this? How am I going to succeed this? How am I going to... I don't have a car. <laughs> Riding a bike's not going to work. I have my two cats. I have all my stuff that I brought. And my sister for sure is not going to take me back because I was so distanced with her, not by her choice, by choices of mine. And she tried. Um, I, I had a hard time. So I had started saving. And I got enough money. And I made some very risky decisions. So the next vlog, part C on vlog six, will be the risky decisions that Blam and Jay made. Divorce is vicious. I wasn't divorced yet. I was still married. And I had to get back fight and get my independence and get a final. So come back, see part C. Hmm. I love you, Daddy. I'll see you soon.